Welcome back to Breakfast with Eamon and Ellie. Now it's just five days to go until Christmas Day, which is the time to spoil your kids, right? Well, actual research suggests that children would be better developed if they received fewer presents. Right. Let's talk to a psychologist from the Cove Practice in London. Uh, no, we're not going to do that, but they have carried out a study and they have suggested that parents should only get their children a maximum of two presents each. I don't really hear much parents objecting about this so far. Mm, but is that a bit mean? Or is the rising consumerism breeding generations of spoiled brats? You'll have an opinion on this one. Uh, so today we're asking the question, are kids being spoilt at Christmas? Uh, well, here is journalist Julie Cook, who thinks they are. And uh, I, I agree with you, Julie, I think so. And blogger Emma Bradley, who thinks they're not. And if I was seven years of age, I would agree with you, Emma, but I'm not. So why, why do you think they're not being spoiled? So I think, you know, it's, it's once a year. If you work hard all year to celebrate Christmas and spoil your kids rotten, why not? You know, parents have a choice what to spend their money on. And if they choose that to be their children and that to be their priority, good luck to them, I say. No judgment. But isn't that a bit unfair for the kiddies that don't have parents that earn a lot of money, that, that can't get a lot at Christmas? It does kind of create that... that disparity, doesn't it? Especially in the classroom when they're talking about the gifts they got. No, I don't think so. I mean, children don't tend to judge other children. It's it's adults that, that do that. It's us adults that put those thoughts into children's heads. So I think as long as your children are appreciative and, you know, spoiling is relative. You, you could say that. You can go to one school, though, and you think you've spoiled your child and actually their haul is a lot less to their peers. So I think, you know, this idea about spoiling your children is really relative to, to where you come from anyway. Emma, it's relative to what advertising they look at in magazines and television. <laughs> they, they know more than any adult and what's available there. So, Julie, nothing's going to convince me that they get too much and they don't appreciate what's there. And do you know what I think the biggest problem, Julie, is? Not so much mum and dad, but cousins and aunties and uncles who and girlfriends and boyfriends who buy things for them and just overload, overstack, overindulge. Yeah, I definitely think children get too much. Mine certainly do and have done all their lives. And they don't think they have enough. That's the thing. Um, and the other thing is when my daughter was very young and, you know, you buy basically plastic toys and wooden toys and whatnot, she'd play with them for two minutes and then they just slowly make a pile in the corner of the room and that's yes. where they would languish for the next year until you throw them out or give them to someone else. Exactly. Um, but I also agree with what you just said, which is one thing that really gets me is when people say, oh, Father Christmas got me this. And Father Christmas is meant to be, you know, egalitarian and give everybody the same. But the trouble is when people say, Father Christmas got me a PS5 and somebody else says, oh, well, Father Christmas only got me some socks and, and a teddy. Um, that makes children, and I think I disagree, I think children do compare each other to, to their peers. They think, well, why did Father Christmas not get me as much as somebody else? And that, I think, is, is, is deeply unfair. Yeah. And what's also unfair, I, I would say, uh, Emma, is when Father Christmas leaves things that the real father can't play with um, and, and, and there's just not enough amusement to go around the whole family. I just think you keep your daddy happy at home and everybody's happy because he's going to have to play with most of the things anyway uh, with, with what goes on. But I do, I do think there is a, a terrible um, situation about overindulgence. But what would you suggest in terms of um, regularising people's expectations? So I think, you know, have conversations with your children, your young people, find out what they really want. I mean, I asked mine for a like Christmas list, so I know they're not going to be things that are stacked and left in the corner as well. And, and my gifts often include, you know, clothes that I wouldn't normally, like designer brands and things that I wouldn't buy throughout the year for them. So they're treats. Um, and I think, you know, that that is important to me. And that is that is how we top up their wardrobes as well for the rest of the year, you know, so it's not all plastic tat in a corner. Yes. And I think, you know, that's that's important as well. 
yet making it look different, making it feel special, whatever it is. Paul, what tips would you have with your with your kids and through the years and well, what you did with, with them? The word spoil means you've spoilt the kids. In other words, you've ruined the kids by giving them all these things and they're acting spoil and act up. But sometimes if you buy a lot of presents, it's if they behave, it, exactly, and if they appreciate it, then it's, it's up good. to the we'll parent. Feel good about it. I don't um, have a problem with it. As long are... as the kids don't say, I need this, I want that, I don't want that. That's when you see a kid that's spoiled. And your kids are lovely. Well, thank you, Ellen. And they'd be very appreciative. Or imagine saying, Santa brought me this and I don't want it. I know. Oh, Can you imagine a, oh, such a thing? Oh, terrible thing. Uh, Julie and Emma, thank you both very much indeed. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to be bad Santa and say goodbye <laughs> to the two of you. I hope, hope you have been good and Santa's good to you too as well. Thank you very much.